My name is Deborah Deacon and I was born in Queensland. My mother is Eleanor Harding, who was a well-known identity in the Aboriginal community of Fitzroy from the 1950s right up until the 1990s. My mother is Aboriginal Islander and originally from Queensland. She is of the Mur people, that's Murray Island, and Kugu people, Western Cape York. In about 1959, Mum left Queensland to escape the Queensland Act and racism. She had three children at the time and she was determined that her children had the opportunity to a better future. I am the eldest and then there is my sister Destiny and brother Kedron. When she first came down to Melbourne, she only took Destiny. Mum had a purse full of money but she was knocked back repeatedly for accommodation because she was black. On her first night in Melbourne, she had to stay in the exhibition gardens and sat on a park bench while Destiny, who was a toddler, slept in her lap. There were parkies, both black and white, that sat around and yarned with Mum to keep her company. This was the first time that my mother ever stayed overnight in a public garden park. The parkies told her that she would be able to find accommodation in Fitzroy, where many Aboriginal families lived. The next day, Mum found accommodation in a big boarding house in Gore Street, Fitzroy. It was a double-storey terrace building. Mum straight away got me and my brother down from Queensland. We lived in one room and we shared the communal kitchen, bathroom and laundry with other families. My first school was Cambridge Street Primary School in Collingwood. Mum would walk me there in the mornings and sometimes Annie Stella Nichols' daughter, Cheryl, would pick me up in the afternoon. I remember we used to sometimes get taunted and called blackies. I loved Fitzroy and in our boarding house we were the only family that had a TV. So many of the kids would come in our room to watch TV. We even had an electric toaster that every family borrowed. It was very much a sharing and caring environment, even though we were all poor. We moved to Brunswick as Mum remarried to Jack Harding. My brother Johnny was born in 1961. I remember many of the aunts from Fitzroy would babysit us. In 1964, we moved to the housing commission flats in Ingle Street, Port Melbourne and my sister Janina Harding was born. Our next move was another housing commission home in Port Melbourne where we had a big backyard. Mum often had visitors from Fitzroy and there were many sing-alongs with people with guitars. I went to a girls high school in South Melbourne and sometimes Mum would get me to get a tram to Smith Street Collingwood to meet her. She then would take me to the pub in Fitzroy. I would have rice with squash drinks People would play the jukebox and play Ray Charles songs like Hit the Road Jack and I Can't Stop Loving You. My very first full-time job was in 1972 at the Victorian Aboriginal Health Service. Nanny Briggs told my mum about the job. I loved my first job at bars. It was in a shop front, number 229 Gertrude Street, Fitzroy. Arnie Elmerthorpe was the administrator. Arnie Edna Brown was our cleaner. It was like a home away from home. People would call in for cuppers in the back kitchen with Aunty Edna. Many kids my age or younger would call in looking for their natural mother or father or extended family. These kids were either fostered out with white people or brought up in orphanages. Fitzroy is where they came for family and culture. My mother would help many of them locate their families. She often could tell by looking at them who their mob was. My mum always assisted people even though we did not have much. She often took kids in. My mother was on the board of the legal service and also the Aborigines Advancement League when it was in Northcote. I remember Muhammad Ali visited Melbourne in 1979. I remember he came to bars and before we knew it, traffic was at a standstill. You couldn't move. My life has been enriched by so many Aboriginal people and elders, including my mother. It was my childhood living in Fitzroy in the early 1960s and also my young working life at bars that gave me my guiding principles such as individual empowerment and community empowerment as Uncle Bruce McGuinness preached and practiced it.